So guys, we are back with yet another first Descendant update video and the latest update to the game is Hotfix 1.0.7 which includes many quality of life changes and a few other things you definitely need to know about. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and the winner of last week's Ultimate Descendant or Calibre Giveaway can be seen on screen now. If this is you, hit me up on my Discord link down below. Now do you guys want to win an Ultimate Descendant or the equivalent in Calibre over 5000 Calibre? Well it's as simple as this. Drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below and make sure you are subbed. The more I see you on my first Descendant videos, the more of a chance you have of winning. So good luck everybody. Okay, so Hotfix of 1.0.7 has now been officially released and today guys we go through the entirety of the patch notes. So let's get straight into it guys and content improvements starting with that content. If you do not select a board or continue during an interim review in special operations, a board will be selected automatically. This is great because it kicks out those AFK players just sweeping up that XP doing no work at all. Lowered the difficulty of mechanics in the hard intercept battle of Frost Walker. And the changes here are great, guys. I mean, this is one pain in the ass boss, I'm not gonna lie. So, the changes they have done here, the first one destroyed frenzied parts will now generate two embers. Pretty cool. Increased the maximum threshold of the frenzy gauge, reducing the number of times of the Colossus becoming frenzied. Good as well. When using those slug shots to frenzy Colossus, its leg movements will be reduced, making it easier to aim at its weak points. I mean, this was the most difficult part of the whole thing for me, besides obviously the embers and picking them up and doing the actual mechanics of the boss. It's the way he danced when he's in that frenzy mode, you couldn't hit his legs, it was such a pain in the ass. So using those slug shots reduces their movement, which is a great, great change. And I must remember that when I next attempt him. Okay, so we're moving on. Characters will no longer receive damage when they are in the hazardous area once the void intercept battle ends. This is great. I mean, obviously, like they say here, when you take out the Morton Fortress or the Swamp Walker and you're standing in that poison or that fire or whatever, and it just take, it slowly ticks down your health when you're trying to use a reconstructed device. So yeah, they've changed that and it's full of better, no doubt about it. Okay, so the restart function avoid intercept battle, special operations, and infiltration operations is now uh, separated into two types. Start with the current squad and restart mission. The time available to start with the current squad is increased to 60 seconds. Pretty cool. Okay, so the display animation for the amorphous materials when using a reconstructed device has been simplified, letting you quickly check the materials. This is a great, great change too. Okay, so now on to field. In the Echo Swamp Derelict Covert Void Fragment Toxic Monsters will now spawn faster. Cool. The HPF monsters in the Void Fusion Reactors have been reduced and they will now drop more ammo and recovery orbs when you defeat them. That's a great change too. Okay, so now onto the Battle Pass. We identified an issue where the requirements for the Battle Pass Week 6 Challenge of wouldn't it hurt more if my rifle fired harder were not met retroactively. We've changed the requirements to enhance rifling reinforcement to level 3. Okay, that's cool as well. Reduced the difficulty of weekly challenges for Battle Pass Week 7 and 8. Also increasing the amount of EXP and supply coins that you get. Nice. Okay, so now guys, we move on to UI and UX. When selecting additional options in hard infiltration operations, all the options will remain selected even if you change the additional options. That's a great change too. Grappling hook disabled and jump disabled from the list of additional options that can be selected in hard infiltration operations have been removed. Amazing. You can now check the tooltip of amorphous pattern icons in the change selectable rewards screen in hard infiltration operations. Tooltip for equipment now shows up faster. Equipment option tiers are now displayed on the icon. Uh, uh, set effects of external components are now displayed on the icon too. These are actually great, great changes, guys. As soon as you go into your inventory, you're going to notice all on your weapons, all on your uh, components, on your reactors. You're going to see all the new things they've added into it, just making things way, way easy to navigate and see what we actually have on them. Okay, so in the module acquisition info, you can now check whether a module can be acquired via combining. That's actually quite cool. The modules that can only be acquired via combining are Hardline Suppression, Shot Focus and Shield Collector. That's actually something I didn't know about. So there's modules uh, basically restricted a lot behind. You combining other modules, that's pretty cool guys. I might actually try and do this and see what happens. 
Okay, so in the consumables menu of the library, you can now see the amount of consumables you currently have. When receiving all lost and found items, if there is not enough inventory space, you can now only receive items in according to the remaining spaces. Okay, cool. When the unique abilities of an ultimate weapon permanently change uh, the weapon's default performance, you can now check the changes on the basic info screen. Okay, so that's a good change too. Descendants. Fix the amount of recovery displayed on the skill tooltip for Eugen so that it matches the improvements made to his recovery amount in Hotfix 1.0.6. By overhauling the formula of Eugen's recovery skill, the amount of recovery has been slightly increased to a skill level 4. You can now gain weapon proficiency when you defeat an enemy with a unique weapon, basically like Luna's stage presence, that's a good change too. You can now acquire Luna's noise surge modification module in a hard intercept battle of executioner. Good change too. Okay, so miscellaneous, console only. Improved AMD frame generation for PS5, Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S. Change the name of support droid to support drone. Cool. <laughs> Bug fixes, UI and UX. Fix an issue where applying a filter at the lab and re entering the menu cause a filter to not be applied to the list despite the filter itself being maintained. Okay, so console only here. Fix an issue where the peacemaker did not show up in a weapon material research auto search. Console again. Fix an issue where searching fire or chill or electric with auto suggestions. For descendant modules also filtered other attributes okay so now on to descendants fix an issue where bunny's throw bomb skill did not hit nearby enemies when she was equipped with high voltage okay fix an issue where luna danced while holding her gun when she used an enhanced skill with the noise surge module Fix an issue where Luna's facial graphics were intermittently rendered incorrectly. Fix an issue where Sharon could cancel her skill, mouse right click, control her left trigger, even after she fired her flash, even after she fired her flash short sword skill during ending motions. Fix an issue where enabling a range module would not change the skill description for ultimate Lepic and Lepic's traction grenade. Fix an issue where equipping a range module would not expand the effect of Lepic's traction grenade. Ok so equipment and modules now. Fix an issue where the display of firearm critical hit rate was switched with skill critical hit rate in 4 piece set effect tooltip for the external component acrobat set effects. Ok so other languages here, fix an issue at the tooltip for the spiral tidal wave skill module omitted a description saying attracts glutinous impurities. Ok, fix an issue in intercept battles where two players could remove parts at the same time when using the mid air maneuvering sub module, <laughs> I didn't know about that. Ok so now on to field. Fix an issue where the support drone in the echo swamp outpost did not function properly. Fix an issue where void fragment reward that let you receive all four kinds of shards was changed from 4333 to 333. Not sure exactly what that means, but I'm sure someone can elaborate down below. Fix an issue in the laboratory where effects activated when defeating the enemy. Skills or unique effects for ultimate weapons could still occur when the Vorgus invincibility was enabled. Okay. Mission. Fix an issue where being tasked with collection for the fortress infiltration outposts, quarantine zone and the heart of fortress with a four member party could intermittently cause a champion monster to not spawn, making it impossible to acquire the balanced plasma battery. Hmm. Increase the monster skill score of the infiltration operation, the haven, uh, fix an issue where it was impossible to reach a perfect score even when increasing options to 240. Now that does make sense while I was struggling with that. Hmm. Fix an issue in hard infiltration operation on non laboratory where a player reaching a no resurrection zone in advance could cause other players to not be teleported to the no resurrection zone. Also fix an issue where a melee enemy could intermittently stop moving and not pursue players. And then we have miscellaneous. PC, fix an issue where using certain skills could glitch the screen when the NVIDIA reflex boost mode was enabled. And that's basically the end guys, but actually end with coming soon, guess who? The new descendants armed with cold fury and ready to strike. What do you think is her 
greatest strategy. Looks familiar, we can't really see in a silhouette form. But that big old weapon there, is that a rocket launcher? Is it a sniper rifle? It looks more like a sniper rifle leaning on the ground to me, but I cannot be certain. Could this be the descendant tease in Haley? It's another guess. Or even well, a wild one out there, guys. You guys remember Dominique? Uh, you probably would have come well, you would have come across her during your gameplay playthrough. Uh, you can see it on the screen now. This female uh, soldier with that badass looking sniper rifle. Who knows, guys? Who knows? Just throwing out wild guesses there, but who do you think? But there we have it guys now what i do want to actually address uh, they posted i think it was last week when they spoke about this patch coming out today this hotfix coming out today they said at the end and you're seeing this on screen now they said one less thing from previous patch notes we were discussing plans to support build diversity we noticed discussions in the community about whether socket types need to be assigned 11 times for each loadout page rest assured we aim to support build diversity in a more friendly user manner if you prefer to use the same socket type across loadout pages one two and three your current setup will remain unchanged socket type assignments will only be acquired or required if you want different socket types for each loadout Still no idea exactly what they mean here, but they actually haven't elaborated at all in regards to today's hotfix. So who knows? I mean, if anyone can explain what's going on here, if you know more about this than anyone else, let us know down below. But I did think we'd hear something about this today, but it seems as though we haven't. But yes, there we have it, guys, and the end of the video has now arrived. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe, and hopefully, guys, I will see you on that next one.